Whether you're a seasoned stoner or a regular gas station goer, you've probably heard of THCA. Now, if you don't know what it is, you're probably thinking, this is literally a bag of weed, how the hell is this legal? The thing is, it's not weed but it sort of is at the same time. It looks identical, it gets you high, it has similar psychological effects, and it comes in all the same forms. Yet, you can legally buy THCA in nearly all American states and even have it shipped right to your doorstep. So, what's going on here? This is the story of THCA and how a sneaky loophole ignited a national frenzy of legalized weed and how Congress may be putting an end to it forever. Now, I'm sure everyone watching this knows what THC is, but I bet not as many of you are aware of what exactly THCA is. You've probably seen it in your nearby gas station or smoke shop, but probably assumed it was one of those nasty chemically derived garbage products. However, it's not as garbage as you think. Is THC and THCA different? Sure, but also not really. In fact, THCA might be the closest thing to normal weed you can legally buy in most American states. Without getting too deep into compounds and chemicals and whatnot, the simplest way to explain THCA is that it's the precursor to THC. The latter is, of course, the primary psychoactive component of cannabis. It's what gives people who smoke, vape, dab, or cook it the high associated with weed. But the cannabis you smoke, vape, dab, or cook is actually loaded with THCA, not so much THC. It's the smoking, vaping, dabbing, or cooking that transforms your THCA into THC, thus getting you banned. So in essence, every raw cannabis nut, regardless of where you buy it, is actually a THCA nut. But it's only when the cannabis is heated that it then produces the intoxicating high associated with THC. If you dive deep into the chemistry of THCA, you'll see that it has an extra something called a molecular carboxyl ring. This extra ring prevents the drug from binding to the brain receptors responsible for you feeling high. But when the compound is exposed to heat, this ring is removed, converting the compound into into THC, which can then bind to these receptors and get you high. This means that the THCA you see in some gas stations, smoke shops, or elsewhere isn't really any different, chemically speaking at least, from what you get from a dispensary. Now, that's not to say that your local shell pack is the same as some top shelf from the dispo, but you get what I'm saying. Okay, but if the compounds are just a matter of before and after, there's surely a different way that THCA is made right? Because otherwise, it would still be illegal. Well, there actually is a little truth to that. The process of creating THCA involves growing normal cannabis plants the normal way. The only difference is that growers will harvest the plants earlier than usual, typically four to eight weeks before full maturity. And it's this early harvest that ensures that the plant's THCA hasn't yet converted to THC, all right? But how in the world does that early harvest make any difference in THCA levels versus THC levels? If you don't know, cannabis plants produce a whole spectrum of cannabinoids. The most notable one is called CBGA, the mother of all cannabinoids. CBGA breaks down into primary cannabinoids like THCA and CBDA, but of course, we only care about the THCA. Over time and with exposure to heat, like from the sun or indoor lamps, the THCA in the plant will naturally convert to THC through a process called decarboxylation. This chemical reaction can occur during the drying and storage of the cannabis or when it's heated for when you're getting lifted. To keep this process from happening, plants are harvested young and tested to ensure they maintain a high THC content. This is important because prolonged exposure to sunlight and oxygen will naturally decarboxylate the plants, resulting in very psychoactive and very illegal THC. Okay, I know that was a lot of letters and terms and stuff, and I'm sorry, but up to this point, we've talked about what THCA is and how it's made in the cannabis plant but you're probably thinking something else. How the hell is this legal? If it's essentially the same thing as THC and gets you high in the same way as THC, how is it not illegal like THC? Well, that brings us to the loophole, which we'll get into right after a quick word from today's awesome sponsor, me. Let me ask you something. Are you a content creator like me or have ever wondered how I make my videos? Well now, for just a dollar a month, just one buck, you can unlock all of my secrets through my channel memberships. After becoming a BC backer, you'll get access to all of my video making materials, including my scripts, research, thumbnails, and titles for every video I make, plus my thoughts behind why I make those titles and thumbnails. My goal with these channel memberships is to give aspiring creators a little bit of insight into my brain as to why I make certain decisions 
decisions for titles and thumbnails because I know how hard it is to make good ones. Plus, I'll be responding to each and every one of you that has questions about my videos or anything else really. Like if you just want to chat, I'm there. And on top of that good stuff, you'll be put in the description of all of my videos while you're a member and have these cool money badges next to your name in the comments. And like I said, you'll get all of that for a dollar. So if you're interested, click the first link in the description or click the join button on my channel page. All right back to the loophole. So the catalyst for the legal status of THCA was the Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018, commonly known as the 2018 Farm Bill. This particular bill stated that hemp-based products would be legal on a federal level so long as they contain less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC. This means that if a cannabis plant has less than 0.3%, it's legal hemp, but more than 0.3% would be considered marijuana and of course deemed illegal. However, the actual loophole doesn't lie within the 0 0.3 limit, but rather in the testing requirements for hemp production. To grow hemp commercially, producers must obtain a license and undergo two rounds of testing. The first test, conducted pre-harvest, measures total THC content, which includes both Delta 9 THC and THCA. The second test, which happens post-harvest, only measures Delta 9 THC and not THCA. With this in mind, it didn't take long for growers to discover that by growing cannabis plants in a certain way, they could pass the first test, then load their plants with THCA while keeping THC levels low enough to pass the second test. This goes back to growers harvesting plants early. By harvesting their plants during a certain time window, the plants would contain high amounts of THCA, but low amounts of THC because of the little decarboxylation that took place from the early harvest. Of course, the farm bill completely overlooks the fact that THC and THCA are essentially the same thing once THCA is heated. So essentially, as long as the pre-harvest test shows compliance levels, the product is considered legal hemp as far as the federal government is concerned. And that legal hemp has experienced a meteoric rise in popularity within recent years. According to Brightfield Group, a cannabis market data company in Chicago, THCA sales accounted for 7.3% or roughly 200 million of the nearly 2.8 billion in sales of hemp-derived cannabinoid products in 2023. This positions THCA in third place behind Delta 8, which holds a 44.2% market share in hemp derived Delta 9 sales, which stands at 20.3%. And all of that makes sense, right? Think about it. I mean, if you were someone in an illegal state and you're looking to get a little stone and you heard about this product that's like traditional weed, but it can be shipped to your doorstep. I mean, come on. But it would be wrong to say that a drug so closely related to marijuana and is available in nearly all American states doesn't come with some harm. While THCA offers numerous benefits, there are some potential dangers associated with its consumption. No, you're not going to get schizophrenia and leap off a bridge, but there is evidence to prove that some concern may be warranted. One major concern is the presence of subpar products labeled as THCA, products that may contain low quality delta compounds or inferior CBD instead. Because testing of THCA products is widely unregulated and often focuses solely on potency, some products with contaminants like molds, pesticides, or heavy metals will inevitably hit the market. This unregulated market makes it difficult for lawmakers to manage the situation, which is more likely to result in broader, less sensible legislation kind of like the farm bill. But as far as the product itself, THCA is widely considered the safest of cannabinoids. However, consuming it can lead to side effects such as nausea, skin rashes, and respiratory symptoms. But I mean, this is a risk with all cannabis products because some people are just allergic to it. And also, you might just be smoking too much reefer. But worst of all, especially for job seekers, THCA shows up on drug tests. So please refrain from hitting the bong before your next interview. Now, with all of that said, it'd be wrong not to mention the benefits of THCA because there's definitely some good ones. One of the most significant benefits of THCA is that it allows you to avoid the hefty 30 to 35% federal tax imposed on traditional cannabis products. Medically speaking, THCA has shown great promise for addressing inflammation and for treating seizure disorders. It can also help people manage conditions such as ulcerative colitis, IBS, and Huntington's disease. THCA can also be consumed in its raw form and is already being used in a slew of different medical applications, especially in cases cases where patients want the therapeutic benefits without getting high. So while most people are only invested in THCA to get baked, it's worth noting all of this. There are many benefits and dangers of consuming this stuff, and it's all important to remember. But it's also important to remember that the whole getting legally high thing is a problem for some politicians, and it might be a big enough problem for them to get rid of THCA products 
forever. As it's become more common knowledge that THCA is closely related to THC, some people in Congress have addressed their concerns. Specifically, there's one politician that has their eyes set on getting rid of THCA and essentially disrupting the entire hemp industry. A proposed amendment by Representative Mary Miller, a Republican from Illinois, seeks to alter the Farm Bill's definition of hemp to only include naturally occurring, non-intoxicating cannabinoids. Her proposed updated definition of hemp would include only components of the cannabis sativa L plant and derivatives with less than 0.3% total THC, including THCA, on a dry weight basis. In short, this amendment would effectively close the loophole, making the intoxicating hemp-derived cannabinoid market completely illegal. As is typical of congressional bills, the Miller Amendment, as it's being called, was grouped with other changes to the Farm Bill and subjected to a voice vote which did pass. In response, hemp supporters sent over 7,000 emails urging the reversal of this vote, and three members of Congress spoke out against it, but it was never overturned. Now, this isn't to say that the war is over. The US Hemp Roundtable General Counsel, Jonathan Miller, made his case to Congress by warning that the amendment would result in the federal prohibition of 90 to 95% of hemp products, including popular CBD products that only contain trace levels of THC. He argued that the amendment would devastate the industry, kill jobs, and deny access to thousands of health and wellness products Americans rely on. As of now, the House Agriculture Committee has approved the Miller Amendment, but it still needs to pass through the full House and Senate to become law as part of the final farm bill which will be reviewed in September of 2024.